What's everybody? It's Sol, and today we are back once again in Crusader Kings. This time we're going to be showing off the Crusader Wars mod. This mod is literally insane. And also I want to point out that to launch this mod and to use it, you actually have to go through some, some hoops and hurdles to get it to work. So at this timestamp right here, just to let you guys know here at the beginning, I'm going to be showing you how to install the mod as well for anybody who might be confused and wants to try it out themselves. But anyway, we're not going to be focusing on any of the Crusader Kings stuff. What we're going to do is I'm just going to do a couple battles, probably just attack these two territories, maybe. And then you'll um, you'll get a feel for what this mod has to offer. And uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm completely blown away by this. I'm playing an 867 because I only have the uh, early medieval module installed, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. There's a bunch of different modules you can do. This is actually even compatible with mods like the Fallen Eagle and the Lord of the Rings mod. Just in case you wanted your mind to be blown even more. But before I before I get too far into it, let's just show you what it does. So we're gonna do a normal army, normal war. Standard, declare war, normal stuff. You've seen this before. And we're gonna send my troops in. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pause real fast and we're gonna click this. Now, as you can see, we have an option here to mess with some settings. We're not gonna mess with anything. It'll tell you about the mod and like things that are required. It says you have to have Crusader Kings 3, Total War Attila, and the Age of Charlemagne. That's not technically completely true, but I'll explain that later. What we have to do is you have to let the battle sort of progress up for a minute. So we'll hit, we'll hit go, and then as you can see right here, so our champion got his head ripped off. Ooh, that's never good. But basically what's happening here is I now have the option to fight the battle myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this, and as you can see the little dev thing's popping up. And what I have now is I have my Crusader Kings, or not my Crusader Kings, I have my OBS set up so that you can see that Crusader Kings is now closed. It's going to show me this option right here, basically telling you what you need to run to do this early medieval pack essentially so what you got to do so crusader kings is closed now we're going to go into total war attila i'm going to hit play and we're going to hit play again all of this should already be activated and i'll explain this to you when we get to that point so we're going to let the total war attila load this is how it works and it, it seems it's very seamless how this does it it's it's pretty impressive the fact that this closes out and you see a bunch of stuff crap like popping up over here but ignore that it's just because i'm recording the whole screen so that you can see this part you're going to come over here to battles and where historical battles would normally be, you're going to see Crusader Wars version nine or whatever. And you'll see here the battle of Thelamork and you can see special thanks to certain people. It says 874 soldiers versus nine or 388. And I'm going to click this. I'm going to just leave it on, on normal difficulty. And then we're just going to hit start battle. And as you can see right here, it's showing you my troops versus their troops. And I do want to stress really quickly here. I'm not very good at total war. Um, so you're not going to be seeing any elite tactics. I'm not going to show you the preamble of my tactics either. We're just going to get into this and I'm going to let you sort of see that it's literally just Total War Attila. Found the enemy. I'm going to get everybody to line up. Shouldn't be too hard if we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send out... I see the enemy right here. I'm going to send these dudes onto the flanks. I'm going to make them into a nice square. And then these guys... I'm going to put it on normal speed now. So as you can see, we got these guys sort of marching up. I'm going to have those these lads sort of approach this. And I'm going to have these guys sort of go this way. And we'll have these guys go here. And then those guys will go like this. So basically... So we're getting, we're getting a little bit of combat here. I mean, we got a lot of combat over here. And it just looks great. I mean, as you can see, the models look tremendous. Now, unfortunately, what I need to do is I really need to get these guys to move over to the side. Because I'm going to have those dudes end up getting hit. So the spears are going to come up. And then just this really, really lovely, lovely battle going on down here. And I'm going to actually have the bows focus on this back line. And I'm going to have my slings. So I'm going to have these guys turn around. We're having a pretty good luck here with our troops. The spears are rushing into the back line of these spears. These guys are about to retreat. 
These guys are going to run up, and I'm actually going to have them go into melee mode. The enemy general is dead. So we're pretty much set up here. Not much to worry about at this point. These guys are broken. They're running off. Wasn't like I was that worried about it. It looks like we lost about 70 troops. They lost... It looks like most of them. So we won. Easy little dub here. They're retreating. These guys are celebrating. Let's celebrate with them. Let's give them a little look. So as you can see now, it's reopening Crusader Kings 3. Basically what it does is it loads a save and then it, it just comes back. Now you can do this fight anytime, any number of times. I'm not gonna do this for every battle, but I'm gonna show you that there's different maps. And also this doesn't just mean like Vikings have models. Like I could be playing as Persia or whoever and you would be able to see them for the most part on the map. They're obviously still working on it. This is in beta, but there's a lot more done to it than you would expect. Uh, the Fallen Eagle one apparently works really, really well because it uses some early medieval troops as well and it's, it's apparently really solid so there is that but as you can see battle is over he's retreated and now i could do it again i'm going to speed this up a little bit i'm not going to unfortunately there's nothing to do with sieges um i was just trying to mess with it just now but it doesn't seem like those are in the mod yet however the battles themselves are already really cool the fact that you're probably going to be able to do sieges in the future is already really sick um i'm gonna do some raiding here just so we can make ourselves a little duchy oh well boy well i forgot that i'm apparently a weak 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 lad so we won't do that we got a guy coming in thinking he can raid me and if we wanted to this is actually a close one so we can we can choose to fight this battle because it's close and this is a good example of this if since i'm getting raided and I'm, I'm, I'm low on troops, and this looks like I might not do well, I can fight this battle myself and hopefully, or potentially, turn the tide. And occasionally this will pop up. And again, you know what to do. Come over here. So we have another battle. Normal, normal fight here. It's the spring season. It does account for seasons. It looks like I am going to have a few more troops than them, but we'll have to see how we do here. I don't have a lot. I might be the defender, which would be good for me. Um, I usually do better when playing these games on defense, so we'll see. I'm gonna set up these guys as a line up here. All right, so I've got a little bit of a setup up here. All right, so we got a little bit of action. A little bit of action up here. All right, we got these going on. So we got a bit of a battle now. Bit of a battle brewing. They're not coming up here, so I'm gonna move the, uh, the men down. Looks like the axes are kicking the spears up. Let's check that out. We're doing all right. These guys are giving chase. Those guys are there. I'm going to have them run. Keep giving chase. The enemy general is fallen. It looks like we got a good defense here. It looks like this whole Bowman unit is fleeing, which is actually crazy because this is not a big unit chasing them. But I guess they know they're going to get got, so they're just running out. And it looks to me like this is going to be pretty... How many have I lost? I've lost about 60. They've got a decent amount fleeing. And like I said, it looks like those guys are out. So I'm just going to fast forward. And it looks like we won another one. All right. So it looks like we actually managed to turn the tide of that one. They ended up... They were pursuing. Oh, boy. And I have war declared on me because I'm very weak. I wonder if I could divorce my wife. Get somebody who actually has a strong alliance to come help me. Half damn white shirt? Maybe. I have enough troops, I just don't have them on me. This would be a hell of a way to finish this one up. I don't actually know what he's trying to take. Looks like he wants to take this back. Oh wait, here we go. We're gonna go in. He brought me some troops. He's running, this will be our final battle. A nice little victory, a nice little dub ski here. Hunter's recently disembarked. All right, so we have 1,600 versus 1,200. This will be a really good, solid victory. But as I was trying to say, if you're, like, exceptionally good at Total War, like, this would be... This is an insane mod. I honestly want to just keep it on just because it makes things like this more flavorful. Plus, you kind of get the option to 
sort of turn the tide as you saw like i was definitely going to lose that battle i think that it gave me a slight advantage but in reality i, I easily could have lost had i just sent everybody on at once um we have to let this play out for a little bit so i'm gonna fight this battle myself this is a much bigger one that we've been fighting so we're just gonna see what happens here we've been fighting in the exact same spot this whole time but uh we have a pretty big battle here 1491 versus 973. this is gonna be a proper battle now Looks so like we got some trees, got a pretty good mix, got a lot of spears. I'm definitely going to keep my spears up front. Maybe try to turn my lines. I don't have a lot of archers, which is unfortunate. He's only got two as well, though. So we seem to be pretty even as far as that goes. And I have these slingers, which they seem to really carry the day. So I think this one will go well. These guys can stay on the front because they have a bit of a throwing arm. These guys can align themselves like this. Perfect. These guys can also be up near the front. And we'll do something like this. No flanking going on here for this rank. All right. So as you can see, they're sending up their archer lines first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have these guys come up. I'm going to have these guys come here. Spears on spears is a fine counter. It doesn't look like he has much in the way of axes. So that's also fine. I have a huge line. Um, I'm not going to risk losing or breaking my formation too much here. But if I can break some uh, break some skulls, we'll keep our lines nice and uh, nice and steady. So it looks like they're trying to wait me out. So I'm just gonna have these guys shoot now at the spear lines then, and I'll have them do a flaming arrows because these guys are poorly armored. These guys as well. And since these guys are so... I'm just gonna rush these lines up. I'm gonna keep my general back. So I'm going to just do something like this. I'm going to basically just keep trying to maneuver around them. Looks like their general is near. All right, here we go. Let's get a nice view of this action. So we got two big blobs basically going on here. Probably getting a little friendly fire, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move my archer lines. I'm gonna chase them with these guys. I'm gonna have the archers stand directly behind them and then shoot them directly in the back. And I'm gonna have the hammer and anvil little action here. And there we go. I'm gonna have them continue to pursue. And I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull back my general now. And now we have our archers giving them some pretty heavy, pretty heavy sustained damage. As you can see, I just broke a ton of them with this insane flank we did here. A little flank action, not so bad at all. Not too shabby whatsoever, I have to say. It's like we actually managed to come out of that okay. They had about a thousand troops. We, they lost 800. We had about 1,500 and we lost 200. I think splitting the force up like that was probably a good move. And then also harassing their archer line out of any consideration was huge for us. And there you have it. A really just tremendous win. As you can see, 1,300 to 279 just absolutely crushed him just embarrassed him really um and i'm gonna be able to replenish some troops now he's gonna take over that it looks like they won their invasion as well so we're gonna be able to come in here and uh we're gonna be able to do some things we can we can create the duchy here soon which we'll do that here at the end of the episode but that i mean as you can see it's it's literally nuts it is such a cool mod it works so well it integrates perfectly with crusader kings 3. the menu is a little bit jank obviously all right, he's going to give me 39 gold. And 
And then a mighty Jarl. Here we go. And uh, um, I don't have a lot of people because they've all been dying in battle, which makes sense. Could be the start of something really neat here. But that's that's really all I wanted to show you here with this. Uh, you know, I think that Tangle Hair is a good person to do this with, but you can really do it with anybody over here in the mod. You could go anywhere you really wanted to. You could play as the Byzantines and do this. It's a very cool mod. But again, I'm going to explain how to install it so that when you want to try it out, you know, you can understand like what time period or what mod you should be playing as. So I'm gonna leave CK3 up in the background as you can see, um, but I'm gonna go to Crusader Wars here. Crusader Wars, pop on over to here. So Crusader Wars is this quality of life pre-beta mod that lets you fight battles, as you know, you just saw. So basically the way this works is that one, you have to own Crusader Kings 3, and two, you have to own Attila Total War. It says you only need the Age of Charlemagne, but that's not necessarily true. If you actually look, like, for example, if I click here into the early medieval unit mapper, what this is, is these are mods for Total War Attila, right? If you look at the requirements, not only is Age of Charlemagne required, but Slavic Nations and Empire of Sands. So when you are choosing your time period, make sure you look, like for the Fallen Eagle, for example, for compatibility, you have to have Longbeard, Celtic, and Empire of Sand. You don't even need the Charlemagne one. The Charlemagne one, I think, is required to run the mod as a base, or like the Lord of the Rings mod. You need to have... It looks like you don't need anything but the Charlemagne one. So there you go. You could use the Lord of the Rings one just out of the box, basically. So the way it works, and it actually has it right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to install this mod. They have a website. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to their website. You're going to hit download now, and you're going to go here, and you're just going to download it. You're just going to download it. You're going to unzip it on your desktop. If you don't know how to do that, you can look up a tutorial. It's very basic. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you a folder that looks like this is going to be the folder. What you're going to do is you're going to open up Crusader Wars, which mine's already open, but basically what happens is it's going to ask you where your game paths are for this. To find your game path, you're going to click on this, and it's going to say, like, something like this PC, you're going to go, like, we'll go all the way back to this PC. I have, I have like, no memory, don't judge me, please. Um, you're going to go to Local Disk, you're going to go to Program File, you're going to go to Steam, you're going to go to, where is it, Steam Apps, and you're going to go to Common. And this is where all of your games are stored. And if you go into, for example, we'll just scroll on down to Total War Attila in case you were, if you were trying to find its path, you would go in here, then you would click the executable. For Crusader Kings, I think it's a little different. I think you have to go into Crusader Kings and I think you have to go into the launcher. No, not the launcher. See, this is what I mean. You gotta go into, maybe it's the game, not the game. Binaries? Oh, it's been, okay. So in mine, for some reason, isn't binaries. I don't know if that's gonna be the same way for you, but you go into binaries, you click application, that's gonna link it. Once they're both linked, that should work. Now, this is really important. I didn't mess with any of this, so I, I don't know what to tell you, but you have to select which mapper you're going to do. You could technically do all of them if you wanted to, as long as you download the required mods to use them. For example, I'm only doing the 867 to 1164, which is the early medieval period that will cover most of the start dates because they don't have high medieval period yet. So you could basically play pretty much any of Crusader Kings with this with this mob pack, which is why I did it. But you have to make sure all of these are installed and to activate these mods, what you're going to do is you have to go into Total War Attila, sort of like the same way you do with Crusader Kings 3 where you go to, you know, your like playlist. You're going like mods will be I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. So Total War Attila is going to tell you you need all of these things at a minimum to run the mod. But what you're going to do once this screen opens up is you're going to go to Mod Manager. And you're going to activate all the mods. Make sure Crusader War Pack is at the bottom. What I recommend doing for the unit thing is to just put them in the same order that this has them. I don't know if it actually matters, but I would assume it doesn't. However, that's just the way I did it. This one said it wasn't working, but it doesn't matter. It works fine. I don't know. Maybe if you try the Byzantines, it won't work. It'd be something you'd have to try. All right, so to recap, you first you got to own Crusader Kings 3, Total War Attila, and at least the Age of Charlemagne, although you're probably going to need more DLC than that. Figure out which unit mapper you're going to use. If you're going to use all of them, then just make sure you download all of the associated mods. It doesn't really matter to me what you do. I use the early medieval as my example. I have them all downloaded. Then you're going to go down here. You're going to make sure you're subscribed to the mod. Make sure you subscribe to it. You're going to put it in your playlist. If you don't know how to do that, you go into here at the, at the main menu. When you first load up the game, it's going to be right here. You're going to go to play sets and you're going to add it into whatever playset you have. I have a ton for various mods, as you can probably imagine, but I have... I have a Crusader Wars as the top community favorite plaque and then better barbershop. So there you go. That's that's what I have in there. And basically, once you do that, you're going to set your game paths as we've already discussed from here. 
how to do both of them. You're going to set whichever map unit loadout you have. If you have all of them, select all of them. You probably don't because they don't have these ones yet. But you for sure have this one because I showed you how to do it. And then you're going to run it from this. You're going to run it from this launcher. Do not launch it from the base Crusader Kings launcher because it will not work. It's just it, nothing will happen. It'll hit. It'll say that it's going to start the battle and the battle won't start. So make sure you launch it from this. And then what it's going to do is it's going to autosave. It's going to exit. As you saw, it's going to open up until a total war. You're going to go into the historical battles or where it used to be in the battle thing. And then you'll be able to fight the battle. Relatively straightforward. It takes a couple steps. It's some tweaking. The, I think the instructions are probably okay as they are on here anyway. But if you were confused at all, that's just how it's done. Expand. And I've expanded now exponentially. I can raise a runes done if I want to. I'm not going to because I don't care. But... That is how you do it. That is how you're going to install the mod and that is how you're going to play it. And that's what it does. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope my instructions for how to install it were okay. I realize that I might've been a little all over the place. That's kind of how my brain works, but hopefully it was coherent enough to where if you wanted some sort of visual aid to kind of explain it, then there you go. That, that was in there. I, I'm not advertising that this is how you install it. Like on the, as you saw by the title, I didn't say this was like a guide. It's just me trying to help you all out. But as always, I'm Soul. If you like the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. If you want to see more with this mod or with other unique mods, I believe there's also one for Bannerlord that kind of does the same thing. So I'd be willing to try that out if you were curious. But uh, as that was Crusader Wars, I'm excited to see what more mods get integrated with it. I'd be very curious to try the Fallen Eagle with it. Maybe do a Fallen Eagle campaign with it exclusively. That'd be really cool, even if it was just in my own time. But we'll have to see. But anyway, I'm Soul. This has been another Crusader Kings 3 video, and I will happily see you in the next one.